My brothers and sisters in Christ, our reflections from the imitation of Christ continue today with Book 3, Chapter 50, titled, How Persons Who Are Desolate Ought to Offer Themselves into the Hands of God. The disciple says, Lord God, Most Holy Father, may you be, bl be you blessed now and forever. As you will, so has it been done. What you do is always for the best. Let your servant rejoice in you, not in myself or in any other, but in you. For you alone are my true happiness. You are my hope and my crown, Lord, my joy and my honor. What do I possess, O Lord, that I have not received from you, and that without any merit of my own? All things are yours, both what you have given and what you have made. Since infancy I have been wretched and close to death. Psalm 88. Often my heart is so sad that I am moved to tears, and sometimes my soul is disturbed within itself because of the many passions that come from the world and the flesh. Lord, how I long for the joy of inward peace, that peace enjoyed by your chosen children, who are nourished by you in the light of your consolation. O Lord, if you infuse your peace and holy joy, my soul shall be full of me melody and sing your praises. But if you withdraw from me, as you must often do, I will be unable to follow in the way of your commandments. But rather, on bended knees, I shall beat my breast, because things are not the same with me now as they were before, when your lamp shone over my head, and the shadow of your wings protected me from the temptations which assailed me. O just Father, holy and ever to be praised, the hour has come for your servant to be tested. It is truly fitting that I should suffer something for you. Most honored Father, you foresaw from all eternity that for a short time I would be outwardly oppressed, being despised as little in the eyes of the world, but living interiorly always for you, so that I might rise again from my afflictions, sufferings, and weaknesses in the dawn of a new light, and be glorified in heaven with you. Holy Father, you have so appointed it and willed it so, and that which you have ordained has come to pass. Indeed, this is the way you show favor to your friends. You permit them to suffer and meet with trials in this world to prove their love for you. How often and by whom you permit this to happen is all determined by your divine providence. All is governed by your laws and nothing happens by chance. It was a blessing for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees, Psalm 119, and cast away all pride and presumption. It is good for me to have known disgrace, that I may learn from it to look for help and assistance from you rather than from human beings. I have also learned to fear your unsearchable judgments, for you afflict the good person as well as the wicked, but not without equity and justice. I thank you, O Heavenly Father, that you have not spared my sins, that your rod of correction has taught me by inflicting pains and by sending afflictions both within and without. You are the heavenly physician who alone can comfort me, who in the midst of wounds heals, who casts down to the depths of the netherworld and brings up from the great abyss. Your tender care is upon me, and your very rod shall instruct me. I am in your hands, O most loving of fathers. Strike me where you will, that I may bend my perversity to your will. Make me a humble and pious pupil, that I may walk according to your direction. I offer myself and all that is mine for your correction, for it is better to be punished here than in the world to come. You know all, and no one's conscience is hidden from your eyes. You know the future before it happens, and there is no need for anyone to tell you what is happening on earth. You know what is needful for my progress and how to make use of trials to remove from me the rust of sin. Therefore, do with me as you will and despise not my sinful life, known to no one better or more clearly than to you alone. Grant me, O Lord, to know what I ought to know, to love what I ought to love, to esteem what is valuable to you, and to loathe what is vile in your eyes. Let me never judge according to outward appearances, nor pass judgment on the hearsay of the unwise. Matters both visible and spiritual are to be determined with right judgment, and above all let me ever seek your goodwill and pleasure. People's senses often lead them to make wrong decisions and erroneous judgments. The lovers of this world are deceived and love only what they see. How is a person any better by being thought so by another? For one deceitful person deceives another, 
but the blind mislead the blind and the weak mislead the weak. Certain it is that persons often confuse others whom they vainly praise. Said the humble St. Francis, whatever persons are worth in the sight of God, that they are and no more. May God bless you all.